Hello, welcome back to the channel. And today's video is all about emergency food and water storage, and more importantly, the bug out's very own Mylar emergency food storage kit. Stay tuned. Yes, it's 2023 and there's no end of crisis, isn't there? There seems to be one crisis after another and the food crisis or the inflation is, is an ongoing problem, isn't it? We're supposed to be able to afford shop cake. Yes, it's been reported lately that food inflation is going down slightly. It's not going down. It's still rising, isn't it? But it's just not rising as much. But whatever they're reporting on the telly, you can probably double that, what it's, what it's like in real life, in the shops. So one way of combating food inflation and the, the rising of food costs is buy in bulk, buy cheap when you can, and then store it long term. Personally, I try and buy bulk when I can. So I buy the big bulk bags for pasta and rice. And then what I do then is split it up into smaller bags, which are the Mylar bags or the food saver bags. So that's what I'm gonna run through today is the Mylar emergency food kit that I sell at the bug out, which is a range of Mylar bags plus the oxygen absorbers. And then we're gonna to touch on how you store the food then and how you store water long term. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, stick with me. I'll get set up here and I'll catch you in a bit. Right, the bug out Mylar bag food storage kit. What's it all about? Well, it's basically one kit with a range of different bags plus oxygen absorbers. So the kit contains 20 Mylar bags. So we have 10 25 centimeters by 35. And I only use heavy duty bags for the kits. Plus we have five 20 centimeters by 35. Again, heavy duty Mylar bag and then five uh, 25 centimeters by 20 centimeters Ziploc bags. So they've got the extra Ziploc. Plus you get 20 300 cc oxygen absorbers. So 300 cc is ideal for any size of them bags, no matter what you put in it. I only use the very best oxygen absorbers and they've got the indicator light on there. So you know they're good. You can buy all sorts of rubbish these days, especially on eBay, Amazon, and all that. But um, yeah, I found a good source, UK source, who gets really good um, oxygen absorbers and heavy duty Mylar bags. Now you can get cheap Mylar bags out there, but um, they're so thin that the oxygen can be absorbed through the bag. So they're not gonna do their job. So um, last thing you wanna do is put food for long-term storage, open it up in a few years time, and you find out that it's spoiled, isn't it? Because you haven't sealed it properly because the, the bags are rubbish. So make sure you just buy it once and buy good quality. Right, so what do you put in the Mylar bags? Well, anything really, anything you want to keep long term. So personally, I tend to use Mylar bags for pasta because with the food saver bags, being a little plastic, you want to get one out here somewhere. Yeah, the food saver bags, I use these for things like flour, perhaps sugar, milk powder, all that sort of stuff. But with the pasta, because it's obviously harder, some of it's got little pointy bits on it, isn't it? You don't want to pierce the bag. So that's why I use the heavy duty Mylar bags for that. And it doesn't have to be food items. You can store electronic goods or anything in the Mylar bag. But today we're going to do some food. Like I say, I went out shopping last week and uh, bought bulk buy pasta, rice and all that. So I'm going to split this big bag into Mylar bags. I'll show you how to do that. Plus I got this bulk buy uh, freeze dried food two kilogram tub. It's no good in the big tub, so I'm gonna split that into individual meals as well. Right, so what do we need? So obviously the bags first, that's a given, isn't it? Oxygen absorbers. Now you gotta be careful when you open up the oxygen absorbers. Obviously, as soon as they hit the air or the oxygen, they're gonna start working, aren't they? So what I do, I put them in a, a sealed jar. It's an old coffee jar. Keep them in their bag. But once I pierce that, I fold it in half and I'll stick it in the jar. But I won't open up the oxygen absorbers until I get all the bags prepped. So I do them all at once then, seal them up, and then hopefully they haven't reacted too much with the air and um, they'll last a long time. Right, so how do you seal the bags, I hear you ask? Well, you could use the food saver, like I got here, but if you haven't got one, don't worry about it. The easiest and simplest way i found is hair straighteners. These aren't mine. I don't really need them. You're bald. Yeah, these are easy to use. Just turn them on and a couple of quick strokes. And then, um, yeah, the bag is sealed. 
Another thing you need is obviously a marker pen. So what you want to do is mark out what's going in the bag and the date you sealed it. And obviously if it's a best before or, or a used by date on whatever food you put in there, put that on there as well. And some sort of scoop to put the, the food into the bags. I found these little scoops from NGT, ideal, ideal size. Two full scoops of rice with this is about 500 grams. And with the pasta, two level scoops is about 500 grams as well. So 500 grams is a good size bag. Um, for meals or whatever, so yeah, just a couple of scoops saves me weighing it all out into the bag, oxygen absorber, seal it up, mark it up, job done. Right, so um, let's cut this bag open. For that, we need a decent knife. This is the Beaver Craft. So, the first bags I'm going to use are the heavy duty 20 by 35 centimeter mylar bags. So, I can get three scoops of pasta in here, roughly about 500 grams. So yeah, let's just write on there first. Pasta twists, 500 grams. Today's date, whatever that is. I don't even know, what is it, 20, 27th? So the date. And I'll just write on there, it's got best before in the bag, so I'll just write on there as well, but it won't really matter. Right, so that's the bags all marked up, ready to go. So now I've got to fill them up. Obviously when you're talking about food, food preparation, make sure your area is nice and clean, isn't it? Hands nice and clean, everything's nice and clean. And make sure your scoop is nice and dry. Do it any moisture on it whatsoever. Right, so open up the bag. That's three level scoops in here. That's roughly 500 grams. So let's say I do all these first, then I get the oxygen absorbers in, and then I'll seal them up. I'll see you on the other side. Right, I've done a few bags, I'm ready to go. I emptied out this hot cereal breakfast, freeze dried food from Venture Nutrition, very tasty, but um, not ideal in the two kilogram tubs. So I split them into, into the bags. So the next thing now is to put the oxygen absorbers in. So I cut the bag open. Now straight away these obviously want to react with the oxygen today, so you want to be as quick as you possibly can. So I'm going to put one in each bag now. And then fold up the rest, and put them in the jar. So I'll leave them in that jar now airtight until I do the rest of the bags. Right, so I want to seal these up as quick as I can. So, air straighteners, nice and hot. Just see in here is the bag. So I'll just pinch the sides, hold it together nice and tight, and just brush along with the iron. Don't leave the iron on there too long, otherwise you'll start like crimping up. So I go all the way across just to the end and just leave a little hole. What I want to do now is just push all the air out, the excess air. So just fold the bag, push the air out. And seal up. So that's it sealed now. What I do is just go underneath again just to make sure it's got a good seal. Just like that. So I push most of the air out. Obviously I haven't used the vacuum sealer because the vacuum sealer is a bit hard to use with the Mylar bags. You can do it, but um, there's not really any need. Not with this any, because when the oxygen absorbers inside, when it does the work, as you can see, it sucks all the air out anyway, as it starts reacting with the oxygen and you end up with the bag like this. So as long as you push most of the air out, seal it up with the oxygen absorber inside, that's good enough. So let's say pinch it nice and tidy, get it nice and flat. Just hold it on there for a second and just stroke. Get all the air out to the corner.
and then just go below. And seal up. Don't hold it on there for too long. That's it, sealed. With the Ziploc bags, once you zip them up first, not all the way through, just leave a little bit at the end, get all the air out, and then zip it up, and then seal it. Job done. Right, there we have it. That's the, the bug out Mylar bag food storage kit all done. So you've got 20 bags here filled with food, sealed with the oxygen absorber inside. In total, I got about 40 50 kilograms of pasta in there, plus uh, four kilograms of freeze dried food. So, yeah, there's a fair supply of, of food there from that one Mylar bag food kit. So, yeah, 20 quid, and I say you get all the bags and the oxygen absorbers. And, and now with the video we've got a little bit of knowledge on how to use them. So with, like I say with the kit you've got the large bags, the medium bags and the Ziploc bags. Ziploc bags, like I just shown, easy to seal. Good thing about these as well, you could use these for things like sugar or um, milk powder. So um, once you've opened it and you use a little bit out of it, you can reseal it with a Ziploc. And the Mylar bags are not just good for long term food storage. If you're into wild camping, canoeing, any sort of trips overnight in, in the vehicles. You could pre-make your meals, then we'll cool down, and then put them in the Mylar bag, seal them up, and then they're ready to go on your trip, aren't they? And like I say, it doesn't have to be food as well. You can put electrical items in there, especially if you're having like a, a bug out cache, and you want to put, say, a radio in there. You can put the radio in the Mylar bag, seal it up, put some silica gel in there as well to keep all the moisture at bay. You could be respirator filters, anything, anything in the Mylar bag, seal it up, and you know it's protected in against all elements, isn't it? So yeah, that's it, food. Supplies, electrical equipment, anything can be sealed in the bug out Mylar bag food storage kit. So what you do now with all your bags, once you've got them all sealed, how do you store them? You can put them in plastic containers, um, which I do as well on the shelves. But the best way I find are the bug out barrels. You can fit loads of, of food in them, in their individual bags. They're sealed, watertight, airtight. I also use the food grade buckets as well. We do a good prepper starter kit with the buckets, a range of different sizes. So yeah. You can just put the food straight in the buckets because like I say the food grade with the oxygen absorbers. Put a couple of bay leaves in as well, that keeps the rodents away. But I find if you put them in the smaller bags, if there is then a problem with the container, not all the food is spoiled, you might just lose a couple of the bags. So it's always the best way I think to split into smaller bags and then put them into your containers. So yeah, put them on the shelves on the plastic containers, bug out barrels, all the food grade buckets. Either way, it's a quick, easy way to store your food long term. So there's your food sorted. Now what about water? How do you store your water long term? Well water, there's several ways you can store water and there's a myriad of videos here on YouTube on showing you how to store water but the crux of it is if you've got a food grade container you can store water in it. Percy, I buy water by the caseload and I like buying the small bottles but I also buy the bigger bottles as well like the two litres and the five litre bottles. Now, there's nothing wrong with storing the water in the bottles that you're buying from. It's all food grade plastic and the water in there will be good for you. So it's already cleaned, it's already been filtered, so we haven't got to do anything with it. All you've got to do is store it somewhere out of direct sunlight. Away from the light. In a cool, damp free environment. Try and keep the temperature of the room below 20 degrees and not to fluctuate. Don't to get too hot and not too cold. Like I say, I like to vary the size of the bottles. The small ones in particular, you can stack piles of these on the shelves. And if something does go wrong with one or two bottles, we haven't lost a whole lot. If you had one big container full of water and something went wrong, you've lost a lot, haven't you? So uh, yeah, the old saying, don't put all your eggs in one basket. I like to mix it up a bit. Keep small bottles, medium bottles and larger bottles. So that's the shop bought water. But what about water from your tap? Again, water from your tap, if you're on main supply, it's already treated. It's already got chlorine in it. It's killed all the bugs and bacteria. It's all safe to drink. So again, it'll be safe to store. But you want something to store it in, don't you? So here at the bug out, we supply plastic jerry cans, 20 litres, 5 litres, food grade jerry cans. So you can put all your tap water in there 
Again, you store it correctly, it'll last for years and years. Now another way of storing your water is food grade buckets. Again, we do a prepper kit, food storage kit, and these food grade buckets we set the bug out is a range of sizes, they come in a kit. Um, you can store food and water in these. Click on lids, so it's all safe and secure. So there, there's another couple of options for storing tap water. I say it's already treated, it's already good to drink. Got food grade containers like the jerry cans, all the buckets, and should be good to store that for many years. Now another option I got the bug out are the army issue jerry cans. I've got a few of these in. They come in every so often. I have got them available on the website. But these things are great. You know, I use these all the time when I was in the army. They're so robust. You can chuck these out the back of a four tonner or lorry. They won't damage, they won't break. They hold 20 litres of water. And the good thing about these as well, because it's a hard food grade plastic, so you can leave them outside for a certain amount of time anyway. I would suggest not to leave them outside in any direct sunlight. Stay away from the light! No matter what container they're in, try and keep them in the shade. Or like I say, keep them indoors with no windows away from any natural sunlight. Stay away from the light! So yeah, a great alternative, especially if you're thinking about bug out vehicles, you can just grab these on the go, chuck them in the, in the vehicle, and away to go. Now what happens if you haven't got clean water? The water's gone off, you haven't got no water, and you want to collect and store some. It might be rain water, it might be river water, or whatever water it is. So you've got to treat it, haven't you? There's a couple of ways you can do it. Let's like say you, you can filter it. Lifesaver jerry cans or the British Birkfield water filtration systems or many others. Check that link on my previous video about the water filters, we've got the bug out. Or you can treat it with chlorine and whatnot. Yeah, you've got your Puri tabs, but you'll need a lot of Puri tabs if you're thinking a lot of water. Another alternative is just get chlorine, or you could use unscented bleach. You can put that in your water, but you have to be very careful with the ratios. So that will kill off all the bacteria, viruses, the whole lot. But you've still got to store it in a food grade container out of any direct sunlight. Stay away from the light. Now if you are worried about storing water long term, even a shop water, stored water, whatever it is, if you are concerned, when you come to use that water, just treat it for a filter, Puri tab, or just boil it for five minutes. Take out any unsurety about the safety of water, and, uh, and then it's safe to drink. But if it's clean going into the container, and there's no bacteria or viruses in it, and you keep it away from any sunlight, just stay away from the light. In a cool dark room, it should be good for years. And even after all that, if you're still a bit weary about storing water and then drinking it, stick to the beer instead, didn't it? Cheers. Well, there we are, guys. Here's the video. Just a brief video on how I store food and water long term. Hope you got something out of it. Please think about liking, subscribing, hit the notification bell, and uh, check that video out. And that one. And I'll catch you next time. All the best. Yachida.